Welcome. In this short video, we're going to show you how to use the Roots Magic Publisher to print a complete book based on the data you've already entered into Roots Magic. Now, you're probably already familiar with the reports that Roots Magic can generate. You go up to the toolbar and click on the report button, and then you select the type of report and you generate that report. But what I'm going to show you is how to create a beautiful book complete with a table of contents, chapters, footnotes, endnotes, a bibliography, you know, even an index. So let's just jump right into that. The Roots Magic Publisher is available from two places. You can either come up here to Reports and then select Publisher, or you can just click the Publisher button on the toolbar. And that's going to bring up a screen where you can create a new book or create more than one book. That's the nice thing about the publisher is what I'm going to show you, you can use over and over and over to create multiple books of different types with the same people's information. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new book and Roots Magic is going to display the publisher. And this is where I tell Roots Magic what I want this book to look like, what I want its chapters to be like, what I want the table of contents, everything. So right now there are no chapters. Let's go ahead and add one. I'm going to click on add and I want to add a narrative report. So I'm going to click on narratives, select the narrative report and select that. And Roots Magic is going to give me a default. In this case, it's picking descendants of Howard Smith. But I actually want to start with Dr. James Smith. I want to do a book of his ancestors. So this is similar to what you might do if you wanted to do a book for your own ancestors or for the ancestors of one of your uh, family members. So I'm going to go in and pick on, click on Start Person and I'm going to come down here and select Dr. James Smith. That's who I want to be the starting person. And then I want to do his ancestors. And so I'm going to do his ancestors and his children. Now there's other options I can also pick for this chapter. I can go in and choose whether I want pictures, whether I want what date format I want, all kinds of things I can do there. Um, I can also come and select the fonts I want. So if I click on the fonts button, I can choose what is tech, uh, font is used for the, the title and for the text within this particular chapter. And I'm going to just go ahead and leave it as the defaults, just to kind of show you how easily this is uh, to generate. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add another chapter. What I want to do is, since I'm going to have this long narrative ancestor book, I want to go up into charts and I want to pick a pedigree chart. So I'm going to do a pedigree chart and it happens to start with him because he's the one I most recently worked with. But what I want is for this pedigree chart to be up front in my book, uh, kind of an overview. So when the book starts, it says, okay, here's James Smith and his ancestors in a chart so you can kind of see them all and then go into that that narrative. And so I actually want this to come before that. And I can do that by just clicking and dragging it into the position I want. So I can drag and drop these chapters in. So what, the order I add them is not necessarily the order I have to have them uh, displayed in. Okay, let's go ahead and add some more chapters. Now, there's there's all kinds of things. You have some charts, you have forms like family group sheets and summaries. Uh, you have different kinds of lists, you have the narratives, you have some research reports. But there's a section right here called special sections, and that's the one I wanna pick right here. And I'm gonna pick a cover page. So I'm gonna select a cover page, and the cover page works best when it's at the beginning, so I'm gonna drag it up to the top. And then I'm going to enter a title for my book. And that my title is going to be called Ancestors of Dr. James Smith. Now you can get, be a lot more creative than I am. Uh, you can give it a subtitle, The Legend Continues. And then you can actually pick an optional cover image. So I'm going to go ahead and browse and I'm going to find a picture here. And let's say this is him. It's not, but we'll just say it is. Um, you know, in your book, you'll want to actually pick the picture of the person. Okay, so I now have this cover page. Let's go add some other stuff. I'm going to go in and I want to add a uh, table of contents. Let's go ahead and put a table of contents in here. And that's a good spot for the table of contents. Now you notice the table of contents doesn't have any options. All these other things have options. When I click on cover page, I can come edit that. When I pick pedigree chart, I can come change the options. I can change it from five to six generations or whatever I want. Uh, the narrative, I can do the same thing. I can go in and change the options. 
the table of contents, the only real options there are what fonts to print it in. The reason for that is because Roots Magic is going to create that table of contents for you based on the chapters that you've actually added. Okay, so there's a lot of different kinds of chapters you can add. Now there's a couple of other things. In, under the special section, there's copyright pages and dedication pages and things like that. But there's also things like a text page. So if you wanted to create a page that went into your book right after the table of contents, we'll just leave it right there, you can come in here and put a title. And this title, this, this page might be, you know, a dedication or a copyright, uh, copyright uh, page. You can tell it whether to center the title or have it to the left. And then you can just go ahead and enter your text. Okay, so there's, there's my dedication. I'm spending a lot of time on that. So there's my dedication. Okay, there's also, there's also another special section type called blank pages. Now this is because you may have something you want to put into the book that is not actually even in your database. It might be a picture, it might be a map, it might be a whatever. It might not be in your database, but you want to save room for that. And so I can say I want to add a blank page. You choose how many blank pages, so maybe I want two blank pages. And I'm going to have them follow right after that text page. Okay, now at this point, any time I want, I can come in here and say publish this book. Uh, so I can, I can go in here and look and see what my book is going to look like and then come right back into this and edit it and make changes to it. Um, so let's go, ahead, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to say publish the book and Roots Magic is going to generate it and actually open it up full screen. So let's go ahead and size this down so that you can get a little bit, so you can see it on this page right here. Okay, so here's my book. Here's my title or my cover page and it has the title, the subtitle, and the picture that I added. There's my table of contents, and as I mentioned, Roots Magic generates that for you. And you'll notice that these are actually hotlinked. I can actually click on these and jump right to that chapter from inside of this. I can scroll on down. There's the dedication that I added. There's the blank page number one, and you'll see it's continuing the page numbering. Blank page number two, continuing the page numbering. There's my pedigree chart that I added. Page numbering continues. It's not starting over at one every place. So it's not like taking just a bunch of reports and slamming them together. And then you get into the narrative report where Roots Magic is writing the sentences and adding your pictures and so on. And this goes on for a little while. So let's scroll on down here. And then as I get towards here, here are my sources, my end notes. And I have my end notes for my pedigree chart, for the uh, narrative, and then I go on. Here is my index of the names. These are all of the names in my book. You'll notice some people show up on multiple pages. That's because they may be on multiple chapters. They might be in the pedigree chart. They might be in that, that narrative as well. And so there's my index of names. You'll notice that the color coding is in there. I can turn that on or off. If I don't want my index color coded, I can turn that off. And then here's my index of places. And so these are all the places in my database that are mentioned in this particular book. And that's all there really is to actually creating a book. Now there's a lot of other options. Um, and so let's hop out here. Now, at, when I close that, the first time I close it, it's going to ask me for a name for, my, for the book. And so this is where I could put, um, I can put my cool book or I can call it you know, Ancestors of James Smith, something so that I'll know what the book actually is, and it adds it to this list. So I can go in and create another book with completely different chapters or a completely different starting person and have a book that is also custom and just have them all right here. Now, if I want to go make changes to my book after the fact, I just come back into the publisher, select the book, open it, and here we are right where we left off. So everything's still here. I still have some other options right here. I can, I can look at the layout. And we'll just quickly point out what's here. This is where you can change the margins for your book. You can choose whether you want it printed in portrait or landscape. You can set the header or footer. You can choose if you want the header to foot print or if you want the footer to print. And if you want them to print, what you want them to print. So the header in this case is going to print the title on the left section. The center of the header is going to have nothing. And the right side of the header is going to have the date. In the footer, the left is blank, the right is blank, 
and the center is the page number. So you could actually set that page number to be on the left every time or on the right every time. Um, if you want it to alternate back and forth between left and right, put it on one side on the left or right, and then in the footer right here, choose mirror footer on even pages, and that will switch the page number back and forth from left to right. So if you want it like on the outside corner, bottom corner of every page, you can do that. So that's the page layout. You also have your sources. This is where you choose how you want sources to look within you. If you want them as footnotes, or maybe you don't want your sources to print, or if you want them as endnotes, which is what we had, you have a bunch of options. Do you want a bibliography, some other options, and what fonts to use when it's printing the sources. And finally, indexes. This is where you choose whether you want a name index, what format you want it to, the index to look like, how many columns, uh, do you want it color coded, same type of thing with the place index. How do you want place indexes? Do you want it to actually index them the way they were typed in, or do you want it to reverse them so that they're grouped together geographically? So those are, those are the options you have. Now, what's nice is if I come in here and I create this book. So I, in, in other words, I go in, I go into the publisher, I open this, I publish this book, and it takes my book, takes my book right here, and I look through it. I have several options. I can come up here and I can print. In other words, I just send it right straight to my printer, print it as is. I can save it. So if I want to save it as a PDF. I, or uh, so that I can send it to somebody, I can do that, or I can save it as a rich text file so that it will open up in my word processor and I can make more changes to it, or I can email it. If I click email, that lets me actually save it as a PDF or whatever format and attach it to an email and email it to family members and say, hey family, here's a book where I'm working on. Uh, do you have anything that I need to add or change to it? And then when they get right back to you, uh, or eventually get back to you, uh, with information like, oh, this cousin got married, and here's that information, or, you know, great, great aunt Martha passed away, here's that information, or this couple had a baby, and here's information uh, about that. Um, you then, all you have to do is go into your Roots Magic, add that new information you have, come back into the publisher, open it up, and publish it. You don't have to make any more changes because what you've done here is you've told Roots Magic how to create the book. You haven't specified the data other than who the starting person is and how many generations. So every time you click publish book, Roots Magic is going to collect the data in the database at that moment and publish your book based on the data at that time. So it's very easy once you've created one of these books to go in and make your changes to your database, come right back into the publisher, click publish book, and immediately generate an updated version of your book. So I hope you've enjoyed this and hope you are able to find a lot of good uses for the Roots Magic Publisher.